Prenuptial agreements are not just for the rich and famous. More and more couples of average income are using them, especially before second marriages. Having been through a divorce war once, the battle-scarred often won't marry again without protecting their assets. But most gut-wrenching battles in divorce cases are usually over who will get custody of the children. And the children, unfortunately, can become pawns in a couple's quest to destroy each other. When a divorce turns into a war, the nastiest battles are often fought over custody of the children. American justice can easily turn into a mudslinging contest. Perhaps no case has demonstrated that point more vividly than the 1982 divorce trial of Herbert and Roxanne Pulitzer. Husband and wife came from two very different worlds. Herbert Pulitzer, nicknamed Peter, heir to the family publishing fortune and grandson of Joseph Pulitzer. Roxanne Dixon, former cheerleader from a small town in rural upstate New York. Her mother a waitress, stepfather a policeman. In 1974, Peter and Roxanne met at a party in Palm Beach, Florida, where Peter was well known as one of the most eligible men in town. Both he and Roxanne were recently divorced. He was 45, she 24. They married in 1976 and moved into this estate. He introduced me to a lot of things. I, I uh, a lot of experiences that were wonderful. A lot of travel, you know, a lot of books, um, a lot of life learning lessons. But according to Roxanne, from the very start, they disagreed about having a family. Peter Pulitzer had three grown children from his first marriage. Roxanne says her husband did not want any more kids. I'm the one who insisted on it. I wouldn't get married unless I were allowed to get pregnant. Twin boys, McLean and Zachary, or Mac and Zach, were born in 1977. It interfered with what he wanted, and he wanted a wife who was going to live his lifestyle, travel with him, do his hunting, his fishing, and do it alone with him. And he didn't want to include young children and nannies and teddy bears and, you know, I just didn't want that. In November 1981, after six years of marriage, Peter filed for divorce. He also wanted custody of the children and offered to pay Roxanne to get them $600,000. I wouldn't even have considered it. I'm, money for children? I mean, you've got to be kidding. The state of Florida granted Roxanne temporary custody. Hardly an unusual step. Women are more likely to win custody of young children on the time-honored basis that they are the primary caregivers. It's the so-called tender years doctrine. Peter and his lawyers took their case before Judge Carl Harper, determined to fight that doctrine by whatever means necessary. They would use the Pulitzer war chest to sling as much mud as possible at Roxanne. This was a question of win, win, win at any price that Peter was after here. Dump on Roxanne, make her as bad as he could. He didn't care. As the trial began in a small hearing room in September 1982, many Palm Beach socialites left town rather than risk being called to testify about the Pulitzers. Peter and his lawyers told the judge that Roxanne was an unfit mother. They accused her of having a lesbian love affair with Jackie Kimberly, wife of Kleenex heir James Kimberly. The charge she denied. Have you ever had sexual intercourse in a lesbian way with Roxanne Pulitzer? No. Have you ever been in the first floor bedroom, in a bed located in that bedroom, naked with Roxanne Pulitzer, who was also naked at the same time? You're disgusting. He had a, a witness that came in that was totally incredible, in my opinion, that said that he actually witnessed Jackie and Roxanne in the home carrying on. I didn't believe him. He had no credibility at all. He was a paid servant. Peter Pulitzer had the money to pay for many expert witnesses, some of whom reportedly cost $25,000 apiece. A turning point in the trial came when one psychologist paid by Peter testified that the father should get custody because the twins were boys and should have a male role model. Roxanne could not afford to pay her expert witnesses as much. The shame today is the fact that going into the courtroom, it depends on how deep your war chest is. How much money do you have to spend? Because if you don't have it to spend, you stand very low chance of being heard. 
For their part, Roxanne and her lawyer accused Peter of having an incestuous relationship with his daughter Liza from his first marriage. That's the sickest thing I've ever heard in my life from both of you. And I deny I've ever had a relationship with her in any way incestuously one night, let alone two years. You think it's wrong for a father to sleep with his children in the same bed? No, I see from Mac and Zach. I mean, did I get those kids? I was lucky enough to get those kids. I had those kids with me in the same room when they grew up with the same camera, the same tent, or the same sleeping bag. I mean, if that's incest, charge me with all of them. As each party tried to prove the other was an unfit parent, they only succeeded in dragging each other into the gutter. For one thing, the couple were both forced to admit using cocaine. Peter claimed he only did it to keep up with his younger wife. Keep in mind there were two people there, two willing adults participating. Um, we don't even have to go into the fact of who introduced whom to what drug, I mean, or, or what ages I were. Let's just say we were equal. Let's say we were two 30-year-olds, okay? All right? If we are there participating in an act, then we are both responsible, and nobody forces anybody. Nobody was at gunpoint saying to either person. So therefore, both parents should have been responsible for that. Roxanne and Peter also revealed that they had a menage a trois with Roxanne's friend, Jackie Kimberly. Roxanne said her husband had pursued her for more than a year about having a threesome. She turned to Jackie. I was asking a girlfriend, I was asking my best friend to do something for me in a favor that I desperately needed. And to this day, um, I really feel I probably owe Jackie Kimberly because um, I would hope that I could do something like that for a girlfriend. Peter and his lawyer, Robert Scott, went on to accuse Roxanne of having affairs with several men, including this one, Brian Richards, a Palm Beach waiter. According to Roxanne's attorney, these accusations of infidelity were never proven. The only thing that they had really was this menage a trois, and of course, Peter was right in the middle of that. How can he say anything bad about that? He was right in the middle of two gals. But Roxanne's troubles only got worse as the trial progressed. Several witnesses testified about her interest in the supernatural. One psychic described a seance she and Peter attended in which a trumpet was used as a symbol. After the seance, Roxanne kept the trumpet. A reporter picked up on this tidbit, and Roxanne became the strumpets with the trumpets. Peter's lawyer asked him why he had subjected himself to such a sensational trial. Now the judge. The judge wants to hear it. I want my kitties. When Roxanne took the stand in her own defense, she broke down. I would have done anything this man wanted me to do. It's easy to forget amid all the emotion of the parents that American justice requires judges to rule in the best interest of the children. But in November 1982, Judge Harper granted full custody to Peter Pulitzer. According to the judge, Roxanne's gross moral misconduct required abandoning the tender years doctrine. The judge described Peter as a hard-working and loving parent. It was so chauvinistic that it's almost laughable now. For instance, he found it uh, morally apprehensible that a woman, a mother, you know, would ever participate in any usage of drugs. Whereas for the husband, he was 21 years older, and in order to keep up with the younger wife, he needed drugs as a crutch just to keep up. Roxanne thinks she lost because American justice allows divorce to become a vicious game. A game she refused to play to the hilt. I didn't put my hair up in a little granny bun. I wore my makeup. You know, I dressed like I normally dress. Um, I guess the whole idea would have been to wear a skirt to the ankle and, you know, pull my hair back and been rehearsed and cried on cue and everything. Her lawyer thinks she lost because she wouldn't wage as tough a divorce war as her husband did. I couldn't get her to fight. I try to... Like a coach during the half of a football game, you know, I try to beef her up and tell her you got to do this. If he's dumping on you, if you want these children, you better dump back on him, you know, because you got to fight fire with fire. 